8-7, factoring special cases. So our objective here is to factor perfect square trinomials and the difference of two perfect squares. And you can factor some trinomials by reversing the rules for multiplying special case binomials that we learned in section 8-4. So, for example, the rules for finding squares of binomials. If we have a plus b squared, so if we have a binomial squared, that is the same thing as, right, when you square something, you multiply by itself. So we're going to take a plus b times a plus b. And when we do that and we distribute the first term or FOIL them together, we get a squared plus, let's clear this off, ab and ab, okay? So that's 2ab plus b squared of the last two, okay? Same thing with the subtractions. a squared is my first term. My inside term is minus ab, minus ab again for minus 2ab and minus b squared. So if we look at these two answers and we go backwards, we can shorten up our factoring uh, procedure. So any trinomial of the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared for a squared minus 2ab plus b squared is a perfect square trinomial because it gives the result of squaring a binomial. Reading the equations from the above, from left to right, gives you the rules for factoring perfect square trinomials. Okay? From right to left, sorry. So we're going to, in this section, we're going to start here and we're going to get the answers like that. Okay? So here's my key concept, factoring perfect square trinomials for every real number a and b. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is equal to a plus b times a plus b which can be written by combining those two to a plus b squared. Same thing if there's a minus, and my example is a squared plus 8x is 16. It's going to be x plus 4 times x plus 4, or it doesn't even matter if there's a number in the front. As long as both of these are squared and the middle term works, because it's going to be 2 times the first term times the second term, uh, we can figure this out. Okay? So, what is the factored form of x squared minus 12x plus 36. Okay, so we are going to write the first term as a square. We're going to leave the second term alone for a second, and we're going to let write the last term as a square. And this technique only works if the first term is a square, and the last term in this is a square. And the middle term right here is 2 times the first term times the last term without the square. It's 2 times x times 6, 12x. It is. So equals 12x. So this is a perfect square trinomial. And because of this minus here, it's going to have a minus <laughs> instead of a plus. Okay. So my answer is going to be x minus 6 squared. Okay. This term and this term, right? This and this without the square. Okay. That is what goes into the parentheses. It's always a plus b. There's a, there's b, a squared, and there's b squared. So a plus b squared or a minus b squared. Let's do a few of our got it problems. Okay. So again, Check to see that this actually works. Write the first term as a square, easy, because it's just x, plus 6x. Write the last term as a square, 3 squared is 9. Does the first term times the last term times 2 give me the middle term? x times 3 times 2 is 6x. Yes, it does. So my answer becomes x without the square plus, because they're both plus, and 3 without the square, and the square goes on the outside. Okay. Again, x squared minus 14x plus 7 squared is 49. Uh, 2 times x times 7 is 14x, so that works. And my answer becomes x minus 7 squared. Okay. 
You can even do this with a word problem. Digital images are composed of thousands of tiny pixels, renders their squares as shown as below, right? When you watch TV, if you zoom in, right, you get all these little different colored things that make up the picture that you see. If you go up real close and look at it, those are called pixels. Suppose the area of a pixel is 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. What is the length of one side of this pixel? Well, let's get somewhere where we can have some room. And so my area is 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. So area is length times width. So like with some of the other questions that we had, um, we can just factor this. Before I do, I want to make sure, is the first term a perfect square? Sure, it's 2x squared. That's how I get 4x squared, right? Plus 20x plus 5 squared. So now I have to ask myself, does the middle term, does 20x equal 2 times a times b? Let's check. 2 times a times b. 2 times 2x is 4x times 5 is 20x. That works. So my answer is 2x plus 5 squared. Got a problem? You're building a square patio. The area of the patio is 16m squared minus 72m plus 81. What is the length of one side of the patio? Well, let's rewrite this as 4m squared minus 72m plus 9 squared. Does 2 times a times c give me the middle term? In this case, it does. That's nice. So factoring, we get 4m plus 9 squared. Now, if we were going to try to factor this, if we did not recognize this as a perfect square trinomial, the way we factor with the AC method would be to multiply A and C together. And unfortunately, then we would have to find the factors of 1296 that add to negative 72. Okay, that would not be very fun. Okay, so definitely try to recognize these perfect square trinomials, perfect square, perfect square. Check that first. If it doesn't work out, then you can go and try the AC method and uh, struggle with trying to find the factors. Okay, so check and see if it is a perfect square trinomial first. So recall from 8 4 that the product of a sum and a difference, a plus b times a minus b, is a squared minus b squared. So we can also factor the difference of two perfect squares by going backwards. So if we see a squared minus b squared, we can factor it as a plus b, a minus b. Okay. So for all real numbers a and b, a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. This one is more common that somebody is going to make a mistake because it doesn't look like, right? We have two things here. It's weird that we could split it up into uh, something with a plus and something with a minus, and I don't see any pluses in here, okay? But realize that when we foil these together, right? A squared minus AB plus AB, those two cancel out, and then B squared, okay? So this does work. So X squared minus 64 would be X plus eight, X minus eight. 25 X squared minus 36 would be five X, plus 6 times 5x minus 6. Again, this only works if both terms are perfect squares. So z squared minus 9, is z a perfect square? Or is z squared a perfect square? Yeah, z times z is z squared. Is 9 a perfect square? Yes, it's 3 times 3. So this is the difference of two perfect squares. So to factor it, I take z plus 3, z minus 3. Okay. Let's look at some got problems here so we can get some more of these. Okay. That is a perfect square is v. That is a perfect square is 10. So this factors into v plus 10. Whoops. 
plus 10, b minus 10. S is a perfect square. S squared is a perfect square. It's S. 16 is a perfect square. It's 4. So this factors into S plus 4. S minus 4. Doesn't matter what order you go, right? The two products are commutative. So we can say S minus 4. S plus 4 means the same thing. Okay. The factor form of 16x squared minus 81. Well, this doesn't change here. That is a perfect square. It is 4 x that is a perfect square it is nine that is the factored form of the difference of my two perfect squares got a problem 25d squared minus 64 25d squared is a perfect square it is 5d 64 is a perfect square it is 8 and it factors into 5d plus 8, 5d minus 8. The expression 25d squared plus 64 contains two perfect squares. Can we use the method in, in problem 4 to factor it? Let's think of this backwards. Okay, so here, right, when we, when we foil this together, we get 25d uh, plus 40d minus 40d, and then minus 64. In order to change this last term, in order to change this to a positive, the two signs have to be the same. But when I do that now and multiply it together, now it turns into 25d squared plus 40d plus another 40d plus 64. So now these two terms don't cancel out. So there is no way using real numbers that you can make this factor. In Algebra 2, we'll talk about something called imaginary numbers that can help you do this. But for now, no. When you factor out the GCF of a polynomial, sometimes the expression that remains is a perfect square trinomial or the difference of two perfect squares. Then you can factor this expression further using the rules from this lesson. So the point of this is don't stop till you're done, okay? Don't stop until the, you have everything factored as much as possible. Common factor here between 24 and six is six. So when I factor that out, I get four g squared minus one. Four is a perfect square, g squared is a perfect square, and so is one, one is a perfect square. So I can continue to factor this as 2g plus 1, 2g minus 1. A couple got a problems, and then we'll wrap it up. Common factor here is 12. Okay. So factor out the 12, and I get t squared minus 4. T is a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square, so that's 12. T plus 2. Oops. T minus 2. Uh, 12, 12, that's great, but we got this 3 here, so the most we can take out is a 3. So when we do that, we have 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. 4 is a perfect square. Don't forget 1 is a perfect square. 1 is a perfect square. So this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. But we have a term in the middle. Is it 2 times 2x times 1? Yes. Okay, so this factors into 2x plus 1 squared. Okay. So to factor each expression. Uh, that is a perfect square. That is a perfect square. Guess what? This is going to be a perfect square trinomial, and it is going to be y minus 8 squared. 9 is a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square. It is going to be 3q plus 2 squared. Double check. 3 times 2 is 6 times 2 is 12. 36 is a perfect square, p is a perfect square, p squared is a perfect square, so this is the difference of two perfect squares. Factors into p plus 6, 
p minus 6. Now, this problem would be difficult to factor, except 6 times 5 times 2 is 60. So this factors into 6w plus 5 squared. Uh, rules we would use here is 9 times 5 times 2 is 90. So we would use the uh, perfect square trinomial. 1 times 6 times 2 is 12. So we would use the perfect square trinomial again there. And the difference of two perfect squares right there. Explain how to determine whether a binomial is the difference is a difference of two squares. Well, look at the binomial. Look at the first term. Is there something you can multiply by itself to get that term? Is there something you can multiply by itself to get that? Is there a subtraction in the middle? Then it is the difference of two perfect squares. And that was 8-7, the factoring special cases.